I strongly believe that the institutions which carry the cultural heritage will not be the agents of change. They will be the carriers of the change which has already started. So where is the start going, uh, start going to happen? It's going to happen in organizations like my organization, uh, Intercult, like the CKI, if it can just get some damn money from the, from the government um, uh, in order to work. It's going to happen from initiatives that are coming, let's not call them from underneath, because in fact, in some way, an organization like Intercult is a Bolshevik organization. You know, we are a, a small elite group of people who are actually paid to do this work. So we're not, uh, we're, we're not, um, uh, un we're not, you know, the, the, the local immigrants ourselves, although we have a, a quite diverse staff. Um, but I think it has to, the initiatives have to come from new places, and governments, especially on the municipal level, have to be willing and dare to support new initiatives instead of continuing to pump in money to fill the holes in the, o in the existing initiatives. The, every couple of years, there has to be a few new flowers that are planted and bloom because some of the old flowers are dying or should die. And the second thing is it takes great courage for politicians and for cultural policymakers to end certain things. Somebody should turn and say, I'm sorry, but an opera of that size at that expense in our society today simply is not needed. It carried a tradition for a period of time, but it's not needed in that size. I don't want to end the, the art of opera, but in that size, because in Sweden today, seven institutions receive 85% of all cultural money. The rest of us split 15%. Now, that doesn't make much sense when you consider that those seven institutions are carrying traditions that were based in a nationalist need and not based in a globalized and internationalized uh, uh, reality. This is, this is the danger, that we keep pumping in money to something which is already dead. What are your thoughts on, uh, on CKI? Do you believe in, in, in a project or in, a, uh, in an institution that, that really coordinates the intercultural dialogue in Denmark. Yes, absolutely. This is what my organization is trying to do in Sweden, and we have some resources to do it. Uh, I, I think that this is the most important that you just said, is the coordination, um, uh, because there are many wonderful initiatives, and probably most of you represent some of those initiatives, going on on very local levels or on larger scale. But nobody is gathering, distilling, and creating a strategy out of all of those projects. And if we ran uh, our country in the same way as we run the intercultural uh, question in our countries, then the country would have been bankrupt years ago. It's just a lot of wasted money. Half a million here, 250,000 there, 200,000 there. Uh, some Muslim women get together with some Danish uh, uh, children and, and things happen and then it's gone because nobody is picking that up and saying, here are three directions that we can see coming out of this. So the distillation process is what's necessary, and that's what CKI's, uh, CKI's role should be, in my opinion. Could you point out a municipality in Sweden that has done an, an extra effort to promote intercultural dialogue? And what have they done? Um, well, you I, mentioned think some institutions I think that there are some examples, uh, I mean, uh, in, eat in, in a number of communities. However, the, the places where it's most seriously taking place, we can say a serious intercultural work, is in those communities where they don't have any choice because 85 or 90 percent of their population comes from another country. So it's, it's not a question of them doing something intercultural, it's something doing something local. Bochirke commune, just out of sight of Stockholm, Södertälje commune, also just out of sight of Stockholm. These are places that have welcomed refugees, they have welcomed people with other backgrounds and they've turned it into a strength. And of course, there's a cultural strategy behind that, but also an economic strategy behind that in both of these communities. I wouldn't say that the three big cities in Sweden, bigger, Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmö, have gotten it right yet, uh, to be honest. Although there are some initiatives that have, have, have been done well. 